We're looking through the eyes of a pro gamer. One of the best foreign Zerg players in the world and known for macro and creep spread, but, but still with a proclivity towards cheese on occasion, especially in this matchup. Going 2-3 against Serral. Two time, two WCS circuit championships in a row. Looking like she might be the one to dethrone the Finnish king. But it's Scarlet. Up against True in the Star Ladder Ultimate Series. Now, I actually casted this, this game and these games live. Um, but this is a completely different perspective. I think looking in first person is the best way to, to really learn how someone's making decisions. Exactly like, like, did they see that or not? Or what are they looking at at this time? What are they focusing on? And how to get dizzy from camera location spam. Those are all the important things. But it's ZVZ on Lost and Found. And the details, especially in mirror matchups, obviously at, at the highest level of StarCraft II, the details matter a lot. But in ZVZ, even more. Even more so. Because mirror matchups, and especially ZVZ again, uh, are typically lower economy. If the other player can make the same units as you, the margin of error for maybe I made a couple too many workers or I didn't quite get my upgrade in time is very thin. Very thin. And just the fact one Baneling or five seconds on Zergling speed can turn a game around has to be factored in. But it is going to be um, a hatch first, a hatch gas pull. Scarlet with actually building the spawning pool on the opposite side. Building buildings like this allows you to have an area where you can put your queen on hold position um, against early Ling Bane attacks. True, very well known for early Ling Bane attacks and other general attacks of many, many different varieties. Uh, is there going speed on the way? Wait, did Scarlet actually pull out a guess? Two and guess. Two and guess. So it wants to have a, a few extra minerals, but at the same time, doesn't want to be caught potentially without a Bane Lane Nest. So, this has become a little more common. Overlord is just, before we used to scout, Oh, they have creep. They've expanded. Now people kind of just realized that you can scout in with your overlord, see the drone count. It depends on the map. Some maps have longer distances, um, some shorter. But on this map, you can get your overlord in before. If they go hatch first, a queen comes out to start hitting it. And then you can see, are they making drones? You can usually see what's coming out of the larva. Uh, even sometimes you can see if they're building a queen or not because some players might skip a queen to get a third base faster. It's not common, but it happens. So Scarlet not opting for the Ling Bane. Adding on a Roach Warn instead. So going to be a defensive style. But you, you just can't move out really with Roaches that early. Um, against someone who has focused more on Zerglings. But if you get away with it, you kind of skip the Ling Bane phase of the game. They can, You can catch players investing. Um, a bit of fancy micro there. But you can definitely catch players who invest too heavily in Ling Bane. Like... Like, if True just did a big Bane bust right now, started spiraling across the map with dozens of Zerglings, he would probably, well, Scarlet makes five or six Roaches and just shuts it down way ahead. Now, both players actually banking up a little bit of money here. How much Larva is in the tank? Well, we're at the stage where Injects are starting to pop off. Neither player really wants to commit their resources until they know, okay, that drone count, that little look in there, looking at the drone count. And we can see by the reaction that whether whether Scarlet feels safe. Looks like she indeed does. Gonna set up something of a wall, and of course the Evo chambers are nice to have. Just wondering when the Okay. Gotta change the colors in the top right as well. Just confusing me. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, the burrow was an accident. I, I was wondering what the burrow was doing there. <laughs> Lair on the way. Scarlet making sure. She's actually down a few drones right now, but it, it's kinda hard to tell until you see the drone count on all the bases. She's invested a little bit more in the Zerglings. Splitting off one Ling at a time. This is pretty important, one, uh, to obviously take better fights against the Lings, but make sure you're not being harassed at all at home either. Why not? There's not too much else to do besides hit Injex, make a few extra drones. So now, both players have kind of felt each other out a little bit, where 
Uh, it's obvious this game will not be decided by Lings and Banes. It's just a question of how much damage can be done with them. As I say it, in, in true, true fashion, True has like 50 circlings on the map, and Scarlet is just now seeing this. You can tell. Uh, obviously panicking. Well, a little bit of panic, but mostly just doing what you can to prepare for it. Now, that wall off was near perfect. The Baneling gonna go down, which is the risk, like... If you just make, that that's 15 larvae of Zerglings. I'm not even thinking that much about the minerals. Obviously the minerals are relevant, but that's a lot of larvae of Zerglings that could have gone into drones or roaches, which are more larvae efficient. So the worker count after that's still gonna be about even because with the Zerglings, you do get a lot of map control as well. True has been droning harder, but Scarlet can't really know that. It's, it's kind of hard to judge because because she hasn't seen the layer timing. She hasn't seen the Roach Horn or plus one. Right now, she's playing essentially off of calculated risk. There's a chance that True just went for Mutas behind this. It's not likely with that kind of commitment with without the gases at the net that she scattered earlier, but, well, now, of course, with the Overseer, you know, it's not going to be Mutas. But... Roaches on the way. So this kind of doubles down. Um, you see here, this is when Scarlet feels a little more comfortable. Get a few more drones. Um, get some Ravagers. You don't want to commit to Ravagers, really. If they're going for Mutas or rushing some other tech, I don't know what other tech they do. But Swarm House now. A little bit of Overlord Micro. But right now, well... Bear, not that much. I mean, there's been the Ling, Ling Bane dance. Lost a couple of her own. <laughs> Roaches to friendly fire there. But the Overlord died. Scarlet. I mean, this is, this is definitely a, a kind of a typical Scarlet style. Is feign aggression. Feign aggression, but don't commit... Uh, as long as you can expand, you can get more income. True, on the other hand, is very different. Um, True will commit all out to units at some point. Of course, Scarlet will as well. That's dumb to say. Like, I'm not just saying every single time Scarlet will go back and make 15 drones. But behind this, she's got double upgrades started. You never want to commit to, like, a game-deciding fight when you just started upgrades. If you have the opportunity, sure. But right now, just throwing out Corrosive Bile, buying time for those upgrades... But there's no there's no commitment required, uh, or or really wanted until those upgrades kick in. She's invested hundreds of gas and minerals, but at the same time, you can't just sit back. There's no reason to just sit back if you have a comparable army. You seed map control, you seed territory to your opponent for no reason, because overlords are being knocked off the map. She does have an overseer over the army, but if that gets taken out. Or if his army is able to get in the position, then she just gave up an advantage for no reason. She can contest the map, so she is. True at the same time doing the same thing. It's a mere matchup, believe it or not. Oh my god. So Scarlet has full information that this is happening. Oh my, I remember this game now. I actually forgot a lot about this game until this moment. I didn't realize when I was casting this live... I did not realize Scarlet knew that army was coming, but it makes so much sense because Scarlet knew where True was, whereas True did not know where Scarlet was, for sure. He had an idea, but he didn't know if she had gone back to defend. He just went for it, and he knew Scarlet knew he was doing that. But now we're just going off the rails. This is total crisis management. Drones dying on either side. I'm still kind of wondering if this is worth the risk. Scarlet has lost her tech in her production facilities in the, in the form of hatcheries. Everybody's economy is gone. In like 20, 30 seconds, almost every single drone is going to die. Over 100. Building a roach warren on Crete before the spawning pool dies. A roach warren allows you to build ravagers. She can't build roaches. She doesn't have larvae. But she can make more ravagers. That split sec, like... It, I, I can't imagine how... I wonder how much of this was planned out. Like, 
Like, you know you're going into a base trade, but that can't be, like, a planned decision. And then I build a Roach Horn on their creep. It's like, what? I don't... Good. Now I have but the army is surprisingly even despite all this. What upgrade Scarlet didn't actually... So Scarlet is down by an upgrade. Two plus two against plus one. But the Roach Horn completes... And Scarlet gets 14 more Ravagers. In this scenario where no reinforcements are coming, anything that that keep, anything that could potentially damage your enemy at minimal risk to yourself, like Corrosive Bio has more range. You cast it, run away. So having 20 Ravagers in this scenario can be a huge, uh, well, I, well, advantage, even if you are down an upgrade. Because with 20 Ravagers. Corrosive Biles are raining down. This is no longer a gentle, gentle, uh, trickle. It's a, it's a tropical storm. And also Overlord's being taken out. Scarlet maintained seven drones. <laughs> seven whole drones. She's rebuilding. But the armies, it's, it's actually kind of crazy how close the armies are after all that, and how quickly they destroyed each other's bases. Also important information here, Scarlet knows where True expanded. True, does he have knowledge? He doesn't know where Scarlet expanded. That's super important. I know we're trying to look through Scarlet's eyes here, but we know what Scarlet knows. I want to know what True knows. Scarlet doesn't know that True doesn't know. But she does know that True knows that she knows where his hatchery is. Just try to keep up, I guess. I don't know. So, wait. Wait, did she just kill a creep tumor? How did she know where the creep tumor was? Like, I'm, I'm looking. Is there some magical thing? No, there's no way. She just randomly firing. I don't. Our forces are under attack. I don't. I don't know if she was trying to hit the rocks and just missed and hit a creep tumor, but. <laughs> At this point, like, it feels like, well, well, because Scarlet has near perfect, it, this, it's an interesting split between the players, because almost this entire time, throughout most of the game, aside from the first six minutes, the first six minutes were true denied scouting info, but since then, every decision has been made with Scarlet knowing pretty much everything there was to know. She knew when and where True was expanding, what upgrades he had, where his units were. Um, and she still knows that now, and this is what she's decided to do. Now True is figuring it out. Like, True is going to look at this with the Overlord. He's now getting the information. True has just been YOLOing it. And if you've watched True before, that happens a lot. Like, I guess we're going Ultras against Protoss, or have you heard Proxy Hatch is a good thing? Good. Um, he did now not know where attention. Scarlet's army was, but he was going to go for I that attack either way. Revenges so. before bed. Also, hello went to happy eleven. Yeah. Scarlet's on on three bases, making roaches. That, that's gross about the rapid fire required for this many. Absolutely. The dance. At this point, like, is the army down there? Oh, it gets out. Scarlet trying to keep tabs on it. A single roach. Well, roach is being split up. Drones are precious, but this was a bit of a mistake. Scarlet, oh, whoa! The last possible second only gets hit. Only one unit gets hit. This is a mess, is what it is. Remember, True has better upgrades, and the wider angle he has, the more he can leverage that. And, and some roaches coming in from the back. This is not where Scarlet wants to fight, but True is kind of forcing the issue. He's isolated the base. More corrosive biles. It doesn't matter who's or who's, they hit everyone the same. Files do not discriminate. Shots fired on either side. Roach is trying to slip out. The number is thinning out for Scarlet. She's still got a lot of Ravagers. The position, like just the defensive position can be very good. And, and the sheer amount of Ravagers. Remember, the upgrades go to True, but True commits. A couple Corrosive Biles land on the top. More hits coming through, but True's force is starting to thin out. Scarlet gets an angle on him. 
The reinforcement's coming in for True at the back. Not going to be quick enough. Scarlet. The, up the upgrades did a lot in that position. I'm kind of surprised Scarlet even committed to holding that location. But she barely does. And that's it, right? Like, working with superior information and a little bit better execution. Still, like, there were a lot of points where that could have gone very, very wrong. Um, I'm, I'm, lie, it lies. <laughs> Still, knowing it, it's actually more intense. I watched it live, and I, I remember. I just assumed Scarlet didn't know where True was. Because that was very dramatic. Like, why would Scarlet commit to this if she knew where True was? Like, Scarlet didn't know. Scarlet knew and went for it anyways. And ended up working out. That was a surprise. Like, she knew the roaches were on the other side of the map. And she would be starting the base trade first. But it still was very close to going the other way. So... North American Starcraft.